Moritz Jokai de Aschwa was a Hungarian writer, nobleman, and revolutionary. Born in 1825 in Komarno, the son of Josef Jokai de Aschwa and Maria Pulai de Bana, and was educated at the Calvinist College at Papa, becoming a lawyer like his father. His first novel, Working Days, was released in book form in 1846. In 1848, he married the tragic actress Judith Benke de la Borfalva. He was part of the Hungarian Revolution of 1848 and spent some 14 years after it failed as a political suspect. During this time, he devoted himself to the development of the Hungarian language, writing over 200 novels along with essays and stories. Following the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867, he was active in politics serving in Parliament for 20 years. His first wife died in 1886, and in 1899 he married another young actress, Bela Nagy, who was 20 while he was 74. He died in Budapest in 1904. He was an extremely prolific writer. Two editions of his complete works each contain 100 volumes. Today we will review Tales from Yorkai, a selection of his stories prepared for print shortly before his death and published shortly thereafter in 1904. The Celestial Slingers has the Turkish governor Kuchuk Pasha provoked when the new city governor of Debrecen, Stefan de Bozzi, refuses to send precious gifts to allay his constant threats to destroy the city and sow it with salt by telling him to come if he will. But de Bozzi has in the meantime ordered all valuables to be destroyed and the city to be burned if any soldier enter it, so its destruction will fall on Kutsuk. Not to be outdone, the Pasha sends Badrul Beg the Moor to take all the women of the city hiding away in caravans, but the women see a vision of the approaching horsemen in the clouds and flee in another direction. Badrul Beg is to go after them, but a great tempest arises and great icicles fall from the sky and murder a host of his men. The compulsory diversion has a baron recount how Countess Stephen Repay begged him to accompany her to Arad for a ball, but they lose their way in the forest, and wind up playing cards and dancing all night with the infamous Roba Yossi and his band before the Countess just leaves and no one stops her. The Sheriff of Kashau tells of how Mikhail Doroncius was elected Sheriff of Kashau, who, however, is responsible for several cases of false imprisonment and the death of a pregnant girl who murdered her child after he refused to marry her, being buried alive and then impaled for the heart with a hot poker and trying to have the entire city massacred to cover his crime. A justice of Soliman has Muzin the jewel trader lose his beloved wife, but a spirit tells him he is to go to Mecca to find her in a coffin alive. But it is a ruse and he is nearly burned to death as a sorcerer and robbed of his jewels by his friend. But the Sultan finds a way to expose the guilty man by making him think he's aiding Soliman's many whims. The Red Starosta has a mayor sees the riches of the Jews of his town on his third marriage because he needs money, but the whole congregation is in an uproar when he takes a single silver coin, one of the thirty paid to Judas. Now after eight days of torture, the rabbi's son wants to stop his father from being tortured some more, so he tells the mayor what it is, and his father curses him, so no one gives him any food and he starves to death. The lords of Bialystok are cursed to never have male heirs, and when they do secure one by offering the Judas coin to a church of Blessed Mary, another rabbi curses them with an even worse curse. The city of the beast has Bar Noemi, carrying the Ark of the Covenant, be shipwrecked on the shore of Atlantis, and being haughty and holier than now, he scoffs at the people of a nearby city for worshipping a giant megapherium, and brings upon them endless plagues, death and suffering, via divine intervention, and then most of the continent sinks or is destroyed, and he and his companions feel very good about having caused that. The hostile skulls has the narrator visit a friend, who shows him an heirloom, the skulls of the brothers, the Counts Kalmanfi, and how they will never face each other, even biting a priest who tries to arrange them as such. The narrator then having a dream as to how one brother ended up drunk, and another with a nail in his skull. In The Bad Old Times, Simon and Michael, fleeing the destruction of Tamash followed by the Tatars, have to hide among corpses in a church, and are forced to speak blasphemous prayers, chase after stilt-wearing would-be giants, and narrowly avoid being served human flesh before all is through. 